Hi King Creator fans! To make all your mothers happy, today we will be cleaning up the house! We'll take an empty Pringles can, which will act as a supporting item to mark with a pen to help us see where we're going to cut. These chips are my favorite. I mostly like original, but the sour cream and onion flavor is also tasty. Which flavor do you guys like most? Don't forget to clean the rest of the grease out that's been left behind. Use some liquid soap that you have nearby and put a little bit on some toilet paper. A couple of squares should do. Paper on the outside. Coke on the inside. Does anyone want some? After drinking the sugary and refreshing soda, we'll clean out the inside of the bottle with the help of a thin and long object and then draw a zigzag line that we'll cut along very carefully and accurately. Then we'll have to draw an outline of the nozzle on the piece of the can that we cut off at the beginning of the video and use a cutter to cut it out. Afterwards, we'll glue this piece onto the bottle with super glue. We'll come back to this mouthpiece creation later. Now, take out some DVDs that you don't watch anymore and cut them with scissors in the same shape as the Pringles base. Using a pen, draw lines through the disc just like you're cutting a cake. Once you've outlined the base of the Pringles on the disc, we'll cut it with some scissors. On the new little disc, we'll draw lines with a pen just like they were pieces of cake. You can do this while you sing your favorite birthday song. Take a lid from whatever bottle you prefer and make a hole in the middle with a solder or whatever sharp object you can heat because afterwards you're going to glue it to the open mouth of the disc cake. I'm going to use hot glue, but a little bit of super glue would also work. Make sure to glue it exactly in the middle. With the help of an X-Acto knife or the box cutter that was heated up earlier, we'll make grooves around the lid that will match up with the marks we made on the disc. I hope that you guys haven't tossed out the rest of that empty Pringles can because we're still going to use it. Now, we'll go back and cut out a piece that's the same size as the first and with the help of our disc, we'll draw lines to mark where to cut the next step. Attach the pieces we just finished cutting into the grooves of the lid to form a propeller for our future vacuum cleaner. You have to arrange these pieces like this. And thanks to the curve of the Pringles can, it's going to look exactly like the propeller of a commercial vacuum cleaner. Put a dot in the middle of the first base for the drill to make a little hole where we'll insert this tiny motor. We'll put our propeller inside and make sure that the motor is attached. We'll need a plastic lid that's the same diameter. With the help of another, even smaller lid, we'll mark the outline on the middle part and cut it too, then glue it to our suction motor. Here comes our favorite soda. Out of this, we're going to recycle the whole bottle, so don't throw it away yet. But for the moment, we just need two soda bottle lids. We'll cut and keep the same rough part to then glue to each other and screw it to the nozzle of our suction motor. Now, for the rest of the bottle, with the help of a measuring tape and a pen, we'll mark dots approximately every two centimeters and then we'll turn it into a strainer with our drill. This will act like a depositing area for our vacuum. Looking at this battery, I bet you can guess what happens next, right? A recurring step in our channel. Without an electric system, our vacuum cleaner and us would be nothing. Having completed the electric circuit, we already know that we'll have to glue the battery to the base of the motor and the switch to the battery with super glue. Works like a charm. All we're missing is the nozzle that will suck up all the little unwanted pieces of trash. We'll cut a bottle of water in half and remove the base, and then we'll slide it down the middle and roll it up inside itself with the help of a tube. We'll glue the part that sticks out. With our plastic tube ready, we'll need to make a diagonal cut on one of the ends and glue it to the remaining hole on our motor. No particle of dust, scrap of paper, or crumb will be able to resist. 
Look how easily it sucks up the pieces of confetti. Don't even think about bringing it close to your head unless you want to go bald. It's the perfect gift for mom. This next invention is the most simple one out of this tutorial. We'll need this part you see here from a toy drum gun. As a kid, I loved to play with a little gun that shot out smoke when you hit these little capsules. I felt like a cowboy from the Old West. With a paper clip, we'll carefully remove the protector that the toy comes with, being careful that we don't actually set it off and give ourselves a good scare. We'll take a match and dip the head into a little water. I took these things out of the kitchen, but in case you don't have any, you can find them in any supermarket. Fill up a lid or something with water and dunk the matches in it. Then rub it with the gunpowder mix carefully. We'll make several to have in reserve. Ready? Watch and amaze your friends by lighting matches with your cell phone, the floor, a pair of scissors, or your dad's bald spot. That last one was a joke. Keep these away from people's body parts. Look how easily they light up. All you have to do is give it a tiny flick against an object and then the magic happens. Make sure you don't do it against objects that catch fire easily. For the last and most exciting invention, we'll need a tongue depressor. We'll draw lines on two ends with a pen and then cut them off using our saw. You won't need these smaller pieces that you cut off, so you can discard them if you want. Now to multiply them just like Jesus did with the loaves of bread, in total we'll need six of them. With our instant glue, we'll glue two of them together, one on top of the other, and we'll repeat this step with the other two. On one of the two leftover pieces, we'll draw two lines in the top, like you see on the screen, to section off the area where we're going to glue the other two that are spliced together, and the last one on top forming a kind of door or hole. We'll need the other two wooden sticks and we'll glue them to one end. With the help of a marker, we'll draw a half circle on our little construction that we'll cut out with the help of our sharp cutting tool. Cut another popsicle stick or tongue depressor. We'll need the ends of these to glue together to make a V-shape, like what you see on your screen. One side is going to be a little shorter than the other. With our powerful drill, we'll make a hole in the middle of our V and also drill out a hole in the empty space of our little structure. We'll insert the V into the space and, with the help of a toothpick, we'll glue it in place at the holes of the structure. And the V is now the trigger of our crossbow. We'll draw two diagonals on the other tongue depressor and separate them. We'll use these in a minute. We'll use our structure's width to measure these lines which will mark where to glue the pieces from earlier. We'll also attach another stick to the other side. Let's take advantage of how flexible rubber bands are and roll them up on themselves. Look how well that works! We have to make holes on either ends of these sticks that we wrap in rubber bands and then we'll cut a piece of thread or rope and tie it to each end. We'll tie it at each end with a strong knot. We are not finished yet, but it already counts for a bow. The age of the bow and arrow is about to begin. We'll cut out one end of the base of the wooden stick and with the help of several pieces of tongue depressors, we'll make a corner that will help support the bow when it's time to shoot. I know, I know, we've already used way too many popsicle sticks and surely you're already thinking about how many ice creams that you'll have to eat or of the poor doctor who will lose all his precious tongue depressors. But think about how cool you'll be looking charging across the field in the middle of daylight with your powerful crossbow. We'll cut three ends off of sticks and stack them together and apply glue. Then we'll glue them to our bow and attach another stick to make it complete. 
We'll apply glue to this gap in the bow and then fuse both parts of the structure together to create our deadly weapon. After testing to make sure that everything works, we'll cut three ends off of sticks and stack them together and apply glue. Then we'll glue them to our bow and attach another stick to make it complete. Then cut a thick straw into two equal sized parts and glue them to the part of the bow that you see on the screen. This will act as a base to make the straw sturdier. Make sure to apply enough glue because the straw is so thin it may not stick well. Cut the straw in the middle so that it fits better with the size of the bow. I bet you didn't think you would need a match head for this project, but we're going to use this one and glue it to the end of the straw to act like a target. Where else have you seen anything so genius? We'll glue this piece of straw to the interior part of our bow, and it's going to act as a simple holder for our arrows. Now we're going to make our own arrows with a little pointy stick. You only have to modify them for size a little bit. If you want to add a little oomph to your invention, you can attach little mini firecrackers to the tips of the arrows with tape. I had a lot of fun as a kid throwing these things against the ground. Attach it to the arrow securely so that it doesn't fall off with the force of the shot. Now we're done. Your prey won't know what's coming. Just like this poor potato that's our guinea pig for today, if the potato could talk, it would beg for mercy. Look how deep the arrow sunk in. I'm watching you.